Hey everybody, Drone Tech here. I uh, just wanted to do a quick video of something that's just been driving me crazy all morning. So Trump was interviewed and said during an interview that uh, he basically would hypothetically accept foreign uh, information and foreign dirt on a, on a political rival uh, from another country. And everybody's just losing their minds over this, you know, saying, oh, uh, he, so he will collude. He, he will get dirt uh, from a foreign adversary to use against uh, an American campaign. And, you, you know, I'm, I'm struck by this. And, uh, you know, uh, Nancy Pelosi said here, everybody in the country should be totally appalled by what the president said last night. Totally appalled. But he has a habit of making appalling statements. And so the appalling statement was this. I think maybe uh, you both do. I think maybe you want to listen. There's nothing wrong with listening, Mr. Trump said. Uh, and he was responding to the question, um, Mr. Trump, whether he would take information offered from a foreign actor in the next election or alert the FBI. If somebody called from a country, Norway, he said, having uh, information on your opponent, oh, I think I'd want to hear them, Mr. Trump continued, adding that it's not interference. And I'm struck by the outrage over this, okay? So if you get on uh, Twitter, not that Twitter yet, but you're going to see, at least on my feed, I have all the different networks on my feed. I follow all of them. And you're going to just see it, it's just nonstop outrage about what Trump said. Let's just look at a little of this that, that I'm seeing on here right now on uh, Twitter. Uh, I'll play this clip here real quick. So it doesn't matter whether you were friend or foe. And as a former intelligence official said last night, on MSNBC, John Brennan, Norway could be a cutout for a Russian operative. You don't know whom you're dealing with when you're dealing with foreign agents. That's why you should not be dealing with foreign agents, period. Okay, well, that's, and that's where I'm getting confused here. Uh, Hillary Clinton, as we all know, paid Christopher Steele, or uh, I'm sorry, paid Fusion GPS, who used a foreign agent who gathered intelligence from foreign intelligence agencies, including the Kremlin, okay? He got information from the Russians to create a dossier that Hillary Clinton then purchased to use against Trump, and which the FBI and the U.S. media also used to attack Trump. Uh, the FBI, you know, we still don't know the full extent that they used it. It's, I think it's still up in the air whether it was uh, used to open the investigation into Trump. Uh, and as far as I know, they've denied that, saying that, no, there was other things. But the point still is that Hillary Clinton paid a foreign uh, a foreign government for dirt on Trump. I, I, how can all these people be so outraged over a hypothetical? Uh, Trump didn't say he would do it. He said that hypothetically, this hypothetical question, that he might consider listening to them. And this is cause for all of this outrage. And then you have stuff like this, you know, they're getting out, they're going after Lindsey Graham and asking him, you know, about what Trump said. And of course, you know, Graham put on the spot, said, oh, no, that's not OK. You know, uh, but here's my problem is that Hillary Clinton did it already. We already know that Hillary Clinton did it. And yet you go through these questions and, you know, I've been asking people like, oh, well, Hillary Clinton did the same thing. Where is the outrage? And you get these people. Oh, that's a lie. Where have you been since 2009, comrade? I get constantly <laughs> accused of being a Russian. It, it is it's disturbing to me that so many people have been uh, basically indoctrinated at this point by the media and from the Democrats to believe that if, if you encounter somebody who holds a position that you disagree with, they're probably a Russian. They're probably a Russian spy or something. It's the boogeyman under your bed. And that cannot be good for the country. I want to go back real quick here to the Steele dossier because, you know, we know that Hillary paid for it. We know that they use it as dirt. You know, it was dirt on Trump that they use in the election. And yet, no outrage, no outrage from the FBI because they didn't prosecute her for it. No outrage from the media. They used the dossier themselves to attack Trump. So we know these people that are out there saying in the media, oh, we're so outraged. Over we know that they don't actually believe that because they actually did it. You know, it wasn't a hypothetical. They actually did it. And yet they're so outraged over hypothetically Trump doing this. So the, the dossier itself could very well be Russian disinformation. And I don't have a hard time believing that because, you know, it's the Democrats and media that have lost their minds, you know. They're the ones that think everybody now is a Russian. I mean, they're literally crazy. 
Um, and, and from this article, uh, an opinion piece written by Daniel Hoffman, he said, When the Steele dossier was first published a year ago, it looked like a bombshell. The document drawn up by the ex-British spy, Christopher Steele, contained salacious and uh, salacious allegations against President Trump and suggested that Russia had helped him to win the 2016 election. No one has been able to corroborate its charges. Okay, that's important. But the Democrats continue to see the dossier as a roadmap for impeaching Trump. On the other hand... Uh, Republicans point out that it was created as opposition research, leading them to see it as an elab- elaborate partisan ploy. Now, uh, if you go into the article, which I can't read all here apparently anymore, I was able to earlier, but uh, they, they straight out say that one of the uh, possibilities here is that this dossier was always Russian disinformation meant to sow discord in the country, which it is doing. It, it's like uh, we keep hearing that uh, Russia wants to interfere. They want to sow discord in the democracy. Who's doing that? It's the media and the Democrats sowing discord. Uh, you know, it's not Republicans that believe everybody's a Russian that they disagree with. It's it's Democrats. I want to point out some things real quick that are really interesting to me about this, uh, this feigned outrage today over what Trump said. Uh, back before the election, you might remember there was a huge uproar when Trump hypothetically said that he might challenge election results if he if he lost. That's real similar here. So uh, back then, they were outraged over him hypothetically challenging election results. Hillary Clinton even came out uh, Twitter, and she didn't just say it on Twitter. I, there's a video out there, but I want to be careful about playing videos, uh, so you know it doesn't give YouTube an excuse to shut me down. But uh, Hillary Clinton said Donald Trump refused to say that he'd respect the election results of this election. That's a direct threat to our democracy. Really. So if it's a direct threat to our democracy, what is it that the media, Hillary Clinton and Democrats have been doing from day one but challenging the election results? So if if the dossier was Russian disinformation meant to sow discord and Hillary Clinton is here admitting that challenging election results is a direct threat to our democracy, even though we are a republic. All of you people in the comments, settle down. I know it's a republic. I'm just quoting Hillary Clinton here. But so by their own standards, they are the ones who are a threat to democracy. And another similarity real quick, and then I'll wrap this video up because I just want to do a real quick one here. But another uh, similarity that I've noticed here is to the recent uproar over this supposedly doctored, well, it was doctored, video of Nancy Pelosi where they slowed it down to make her sound drunk, even though there's a bajillion videos out there of Nancy Pelosi sounding drunk or like she's having a stroke, and none of those videos were manipulated. But the media made a big deal about that. Oh, this... even though it, it's not a big deal. I mean, it's just a, a one of a million different doctored videos of politicians on the internet. But again, it's like... To me, it seemed like they were trying to make a big issue of it so that all those other videos of Pelosi sounding drunk, people would then think that those videos were doctored. And so they, they made this big deal out of it when they themselves use doctored video, right? They... And, uh, you know, they took that video of Trump talking about MS-13. They cut out the MS-13 part, put it out there, claimed that he was talking about immigrants, which, you know, I've gone into uh, quite a bit here. I mean, if you Google Trump called immigrants animals and you scroll down, you're going to find... Just hundreds of articles, BBC, and from all the mainstream outlets, BBC, HuffPost, Weekly Standard, LA Times, New York Times, CBS, you know, like uh, New York Times, their headline, Trump calls some unauthorized immigrants animals in rant. I mean, that's so Orwellian. You see what they're doing there. Call some immigrants. So they're not lying. He did call some illegal, and, and they're playing with the word there, called some immigrants. When we're talking, the entire topic is about illegal immigrants. But they, they claim that he called uh, immigrants animals. He did not. He was talking about MS-13, but they used doctored footage to do that. And it's the exact same thing with the Charlottesville thing where, you know, Trump gave a press conference afterwards where he condemned the neo-Nazis and he said that there were good people on both sides of the protest that weren't part of the Nazis and the Antifa, just people there to protest, which he explained very uh, thoroughly in, in the press conference. But the media just took all that out. And they just play the part, you know, where he says there's good people on both sides. And they've ran with that, you know, to this day, even though, you know, I've debunked it. A million people have debunked that, you know, uh, um, 
Beto O'Rourke still goes out there and makes the claim that Trump called immigrants an infestation and, and all this. So for these people to sit here and, and feign all this outrage, you know, oh, my God, Trump, Trump said that he might hypothetically uh, take information from a foreign country. Guess what? The Democrats already did that with the Steele dossier. And guess what? The Democrats and the media are are they're constantly accusing everybody else of what they're actively doing. So I just wanted to point that out today. You're probably going to see a lot about this today. Go on Google, do a search for Trump foreign countries, and you're going to see nothing but just uh, lamentations from the media. CBS, Trump plays defense after saying he's open to information from foreign countries. Trump said he would accept dirt on political rivals from foreign governments. Scarborough, Republicans who don't contend Trump's comments are foreign adversaries. <laughs> Our foreign dirt are disloyal to their country. What? Again, Hillary did it. It's not hypothetical. We don't have to discuss hypothetically. She did it already. And the media... The FBI, none of them cared about it. So what is all of this? What is this? It's like I just was running down. It's just yet another a, a great example of the media coordinating together with Democrats to manufacture a controversy. That's all this is. There's no controversy here, folks. Nothing. If it was okay for Hillary, it's okay for Trump. Got for you today, folks. Look out here soon. Friday, I am going to the Columbus Pride Parade, uh, and I will be getting some footage, some interviews, that sort of thing. I think I'm going to ask people about straight Pride Parades. Hopefully, I come back alive and unharmed. We'll see. Uh, so keep an eye open for that, and I will catch you next time. Thanks. Um.